please do, do tell your story. Okay. So the story that I would like to share uh, with you all is based on the work that we have done with a lot of schools uh, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Sweden, and in the US. And it's a story about our data teams. Uh, one of the things um, that we found in different contexts is that schools have a lot of data available um, on their schools, uh, data on their students, data on teaching and learning, uh, data on management, data from parents. But we've also seen um, that a lot of schools don't make a lot of use of these data. And what we've also seen is that there's real potential in the use of data uh, and that you can actually use these data to improve teaching and learning. And so um, over more than a decade, we have been working with schools and trying to work together with schools to see how you can make more use of these data to support teaching and learning in schools. And we have developed the so-called data team intervention to do this. And a very important aspect of data teams is that you don't start with data. I love data, but most teachers that I work with uh, did not become a teacher because they like working with data. They became teachers because they like working with students and not so much with data. So we don't start with data, but we start with having a conversation uh, with teachers on what is it that you're happy about in your school? What is it that you're unhappy about? What goals do you have for your students and your classrooms? Uh, and what goals are you currently not reaching? So what are the problems that you're currently facing in your school? And that is the starting point for our, our data team intervention because they identify a certain problem that they want to work on. And the problem that they identify can vary from a student achievement problem, for example, low examination results. Uh, it can also be problems with well-being. This is something that we see, we've seen a lot, uh, especially during the pandemic. Uh, it can be a problem around great repetition, but the teachers uh, define the problem. And then what we do is step-by-step, step, we take them through a process in where you use data to find the causes of these problems and then to solve these problems. So where a lot of schools currently uh, or in the past have been doing is we have a problem, uh, for example, it's low student achievement, they immediately implement improvement actions. For example, they buy expensive new curriculum materials or they increase the number of hours that is spent on that specific subject. And what we also see is that it often doesn't work because this doesn't address the causes of the problem. So first you have to know what causes your problem and then you can take improvement actions. So now the work that we do is we work with teachers and school leaders in a team, six to eight people uh, from the school that uh, collectively want to work on the specific problem that they are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. And we support them and how you can make use of all kinds of data to find the causes of the problem and to solve the problem. Um, important here is that people usually associate data with numbers. Uh, so they think data are assessment results, for example, but we use a broad definition uh, of data. And this includes any information that you've systematically collected on your school. So yes, these are assessment results, but these can also be um, student voice data. For example, surveys or uh, interviews with students or observations in the classrooms or conversations that you have with parents. So a lot of information that you have. And um, over the years, We've worked with a lot of schools in different countries um, in using the data team intervention to improve education. So now one little anecdote that I would like to share is that uh, in one school we worked with data teams and this was a school that worked on low final uh, examination results in English language. And uh, they had a visit from the inspectorate because their examination results had been below the national average for a couple of years now. Uh, so they really wanted to solve it. And they said, well, but they've been trying to solve it for many years. They bought new curriculum materials. They increased the number of hours that they spent on teaching English language skills, but nothing worked. 
And so what we did is we work with them. Okay, how big is the problem? Uh, for which students is this a problem? Uh, what are the possible causes of this problem? Uh, and for example, we narrowed it down to uh, that part of the problem was reading skills, so English reading skills. So they were able to focus much more on reading skills. Um, so they actually found the causes of these low examination results and they also implemented uh, several improvement actions, uh, basically at different levels. Um, they discovered that they did a lot of summative testing. Uh, so they were grading their students a lot, but they weren't actually using the assessment results to see uh, what kinds of areas the children needed support in. So they decided to implement formative assessment uh, much more in the school. Uh, also, they try to differentiate uh, much better. So based on the assessments, figure out which of the children need more support or could do without support. So they could differentiate during instruction in the classroom. And they also looked at cur curriculum coherence over the years so that there was more coherence in the curriculum with regard to English language learning. And it was a lot of work. Uh, but these results paid off because that year with the final examination results, they scored uh, above the national average. And now the year before we had a big scandal uh, in the Netherlands with a big school board that had cheated on the national exams. And this was still in the memory of a lot of people, including the memory of the inspectorate. So the inspectorate came knocking on the door, like um, you've been scoring below the national average for many years now. And now all of a sudden you score above. So not on, but quite above the national average. So what has happened here? Luckily, they were able to explain that they had done this by working with data teams, by working with data, and the inspectorate knew of the data team intervention. Um, so that was all fine. But it's a nice anecdote that I still like to share. But I think my main message is that there's real potential in um, using data to support teaching and learning in the school, and that it doesn't start with data, but it starts with the problems that people within schools are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, well, we've been looking into uh, that as well, and I promise that I won't go into the scientific evidence uh, that we have on the sustainability of data teams, but um, we've seen that there are a couple of things really important to uh, sustain this work. Uh, one is leadership. Um, this is crucial at all levels of the system. Uh, you need leadership to support data users and data teams uh, in the school. Um, and we've developed a tool uh, to support schools in this, a leadership tool. I'm happy to share uh, the link with you if people are interested. Um, another thing that is really important is that you really incorporate this way of working uh, in the structures of the schools. So one of the things, uh, for example, in one of the schools that I really like is that they have different departments within the school. And the leadership of the school said, well, you have your department meetings uh, where you discuss all kinds of things, but every department uh, on a yearly basis uh, has to use the data team way of working to uh, tackle a specific problem that they've been facing. And uh, I think this is really helpful because again, you start with the problems that the departments uh, are facing uh, and you provide them with a structure to solve these problems. Um, so I think that really uh, helps. In another school, uh, they have a different system. They have formed one uh, data team, like more at the school level. So not within the departments or sections, but at the school level. And this is just part of the structure of the school now. So every year uh, there are people in a school level data team that work on specific school level problems. And one or two people from that school level data team, they exchange every year so that different people in the school get to experience uh, working with data teams. So there are different ways to do this, but it's really important to embed it in the structure of your school so that it becomes a way people work uh, in the school. And it also requires a cultural change because in a lot of schools that we work with, uh, if you walk into a, a teacher meeting room, uh, somebody will say, well, I think we should do this. And then another person will say, and on what evidence are you basing this? 
So that's a change of culture. And I had even one school leader that said to me, yeah, I love you and I hate you. And I said, what did I do? And she said, well, uh, all of the teachers in my school are really dedicated now to using data and they use it in a systematic manner. And it really improved teaching and learning in our school. But I cannot take any decisions anymore in my school without my teachers asking me, on what evidence are you basing that decision? (laughs) 